Welcome to Electron Line. In order to better understand what moment of inertia is, we've put on the board some examples of some typical shapes and their moment of inertias. And also it's probably a good idea to probably commit most of these to memory when you're dealing with moment of inertia. Typically it's an object that rotates about some central point. Here we have a point mass that's rotating about point O here, a distance r away from that point. The general equation of moment of inertia is mass times distance squared, and if you have a point mass such that all of the mass is at a single point, distance r away from the point of rotation, the coefficient, the numerical coefficient of that will always be 1, so i equals 1 mr squared. But if the mass is distributed differently, in other words, here we have a solid disk, so the mass is distributed throughout the disk, so mass is close to the point of rotation, so mass is far away, you can see that it has a different coefficient, in this case a half. So the moment of inertia of a solid disk rotating about its center is one half mr squared. If it's a disk with a hole like this, so that the inner diameter, or I should say the inner radius is r1, and the outer radius is r2, then the moment of inertia will be one half m times the sum of r1 squared and r2 squared. If it's a hollow disk, that means that all of the mass is at distance r away from the point of rotation, then you get the same result as you have over here, i equals mr squared. Also notice that if r1 becomes equal to r2, then you have twice r2 squared, the two will cancel out this two, and you end up with mr squared again. So you see that the two equations seem to coincide, or at least one will be derived from the other. If we have a solid sphere of radius r, the moment of inertia is 2 fifths mr squared, and if it's a hollow sphere, of course more mass is away from the point of rotation, then it's 2 thirds mr squared. Notice that the coefficient becomes larger as the mass is distributed farther away from the center of rotation, and is smaller when the mass is distributed a little closer to the point of rotation. Here we have a beam rotating at its center. We take the length of the beam equal to L, the moment of inertia is 1 12th ML squared. 1 12th is a small number because more mass is concentrated close to the center of rotation. If the beam rotates at its end, notice the coefficient becomes larger, i equals 1 3rd ML squared. Later around we'll learn how to calculate all of these and how to calculate from one to the other. If we have a solid board with a certain amount of thickness that's rotating about its center in this, in this direction, you can see if the board has width A and length B, the moment of inertia is 1 12th M times the sum of A squared plus B squared. If the board is rotating on its side like this, relative to its side, then you can see that I equals 1 3rd MA squared, and of course this equation looks exactly the same as this equation because it has the same principles. Notice that the length of the board doesn't really matter for that equation. So you can see again that the moment of inertia is related to how the mass is distributed relative to the rotational motion of the object. The farther away the mass is distributed, the larger the moment of inertia, the closer the mass is to the point of rotation, the smaller the moment of inertia. And that gives you another good perspective of what we mean, of what we mean by the moment of inertia.